we're making really good progress here as you can see let me go ahead and run it again you can see we now have a nice background look at that very cool and we have here this our edit text where we're going to be entering for instance Spokane okay, Washington as such and when we hit enter what we're going to do we're going to hide our keyboard here and then we will then populate our views and of course we're going to have here a tab view or a tab layout I should say which will connect with a view pager so it's going to be great now let's go ahead and set things up let's go back to our app here our project and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to app right click and let's go to I'm going to go to file I'm going to say project structure because we are going to add a vo the volley library which will allow us to fetch data from the internet fetch data in this case fetch the temperatures and the weather forecast from our API okay so we do go to app here go to dependencies and at the bottom here we're gonna say plus we want a library dependency we're gonna go ahead and say volley enter for some reason our volley is not working maybe I need to restart let's restart our Android studio just to make sure because things like this happen all the time so I'm gonna go ahead and restart this Okay, restarted. Let's see if this is going to work now. Let's go again to app and say file. I'm going to go project structure. Let's go back to make sure we click on the app. Let's go to dependencies. Plus, we want the library dependency. Okay, let's see if this works now. Let's say volley. And search. For some reason, it's not working. No problem. What we can do are the alternatives. We have always alternatives. We can actually go online and do it ourselves. So open up the browser. I'm going to say Volley Android as such. You see Google Volley. Click on that. And there we go. We come here. Looks we don't have it. Uh, let's go to this link. This is indeed from Google because Volley is actually was actually developed and is maintained by Google. Let's go ahead and copy this. Go back to our project. Oops. Go back to our project. Let's go to our Gradle. Make sure we go to Gradle app, the second one. Double click. And we are going to manually do this. So paste it in and sync it all up takes a few seconds ah there's the problem i forgot the string there we go let's try again Everything is now syncing. There we go. Let's see if this actually works. If I go to main anywhere here, I'm going to say volley. And there we go. We have volley toolbox. That's good. We're going to create a singleton that will sync up, that will allow us to use our volley. Now, this is not necessary again, uh, but it's a good programming practice. So we're going to create a singleton. That way we don't have to create instances of objects each time we want to invoke this library the library to get our JSON. Okay, so simply uh, to organize my code, I'm going to right click inside of this package. I'm going to say new, I'm going to create a new package. This name here, I'm going to call controller as such. Create a few other, oh, actually outside here, create a new package as well new 
package. This is going to be data. Again, right click new, new package, and this is going to be model. Okay, this will just organize our code better. And that's always a good thing to do. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, yeah, well, before we go any further, I'm going to save this and give it a quick run, just to make sure we didn't break anything. Say so, okay. And there we go. Thank goodness we didn't break anything. <laughs> it's time to celebrate, folks. All right, let's keep at it. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to create a controller class here, which is the singleton. So right click, say new. I want a Java class. App controller as such, and is going to inherit from application, Android application, like that one there. Okay, say okay. And there we go. I already have the code and I won't bore you with the details. I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything over. And then get rid of this because that's not what we're going to be using. Okay. Let's make sure I import. There we go. Okay, so again, this app controller extends application and you can see inside here we have this app controller which gets an instance of our request queue, in this case, the actual app controller. And we have a on create because since we are inheriting from application, we have access to on create. We are overriding this method, which we're just setting things up there. Okay, but the most important thing here to note is that we have this add to request queue two of them actually different flavors because this one takes two parameters this one takes one okay so so what we're going to do next is we need to model our data meaning that we have to go back to our browser and let's look at the model of what we're going to be receiving let's get rid of all these tabs we don't need them anymore okay so if you look in fact i'm going to copy let's see make it smaller so back to our developer at yahoo.com where we actually getting the weather forecast as an API. Let's copy this link here because this is where the query is. This is where our JSON lives. I'm going to paste it in a new window here, tab. And you notice here, this is our payload, JSON payload that we're going to be parsing and getting all the information that we need. But the most important thing here that we need to look at is the structure of our data, because this will define how we are going to create those the model class that we are going we are going to be putting together in a second. So there's a lot of information, some of which we can ignore. The most important information starts is inside the results. If you close that, you notice there we go, is inside of the results object. Okay, but you also notice the result results object contains another object called channel. Okay, which contains units object, and directly inside of our channel we have the title, which tells us. Yahoo weather Spokane Washington and so forth and has description language when this was built right when was this actually uh, updated so we know exactly this was updated right away okay and has location object which tells us the city and this is all of course coming from the query that we passed here right because if you look let's go back to let's say here Inside of our query, you notice it says Spokane, and we have this gibberish here. What all this is, is just spaces. So when we put this link inside of a web browser, um, where, where we have spaces, it just gives us percentage, 20, percentage, 3D, and all these weird characters, okay? But what's important here is this Spokane and Washington. You notice if I change this to maybe Beira, and I change this to the WA as a state and change it to Mozambique, that's the country, you notice things are going to change because now look at this, it says Beira as the city and Mozambique as the country. So there's flexibility here. But again, what I want you to pay attention to is the information that we have, and we have to pick what is it that we need. So we can use it to model our classes after this. 
Okay, so we have location that would be important, of course, which has city, country, and region. Okay, we may capture that. We have wind object, which has chill, 77, direction, and speed. And at the top here, you can see that it, uh, it also gives us the units. So we know distance is in miles, pressure is in inches, and speed is miles per hour. And of course, we can change that. And also temperature is in Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, I know I'm a metric person as well, but we live in the United States and the United States just decided that they don't want to be part of the metric system. Ah, very confusing. <laughs> all right, okay, so we have all this information here. Um, we have astronomy, so it tells us what time the sunrise is going to happen and sunset like. We have atmosphere, humidity, pressure, rising visibility, and so forth. And we have here the conditions, okay? It tells us latitude and longitude. So the condition is going to be code is 11. We will know what that means, date, temperature, and shower. So it tells us the description of what's going to be happening that day. And then we have forecast. So this information, obviously, we're going to be using all of this information. So for forecast, it's an array which contains objects. It has the code again, date, day, high and low and of course it has the text which is the description of that day so we're going to be using this to actually populate um, our tab our view pager here which will allow users to go left and right and as they go left and right we will populate each of these objects our forecast objects Ooh, it sounded like a lot of things not really it's not a lot of things, it's just a lot of moving parts, which we can actually handle no problem. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to dissect and start putting together the actual objects or the actual module that we are going to, that will hold our data and be able to display in our app. All right, folks, I'll see you in the next video.